The Bentley Continental GT has been the biggest selling Bentley ever. And now, 15 years since the car was first introduced, there's a new one. And here it is. Now, while the GT has always had a familiar shape, this one breaks with tradition. It's lower, more sleek looking, and would you just look at the size of that grille? You're left in no doubt that this is a Bentley. Inside the Bentley Continental GT, it's as luxurious as you'd expect it to be. Well, what may come as a surprise is how modern it feels in here, and that's thanks to, surprise, surprise, lots of screens. Now, the first is the full TFT display in front of you. Now, it's very similar to the Audi Virtual Cockpit, and it works in a very similar way as well. You cycle through, you've got your nav, you've got your phone, you've got your uh, audio, and you've got your car settings as well. But in the Bentley, thanks to the dials, which look very traditional, they sort of, they do a very good job in replicating the old style Bentley clocks. I have to say, I do prefer the old Bentley clocks, but this is 2018 after all, isn't it? Now, uh, joining that screen is the large infotainment screen in the center of the dash. Now, if it looks very familiar, that's because I think it's pinched from the Porsche Panamera, but of course, Bentley have given a bit of a facelift with their own uh, typography and graphics. And just like the Porsche, it works very nicely indeed. There's no haptic feedback like you get in a Audi A8, for instance, but it does work very nicely. But because this is a Bentley and the modern gentleman doesn't want to be sort of bombarded with technology all of the time, you can get rid of that screen. You press this button here and it rolls round. And then there we are, we've got a, some veneer. We've got three little dials there. We've got outside temperature gauge, we've got a compass, and we've got a lap counter as well. It all seems very lovely. And when you turn the ignition off on this car, the whole thing does another 360 degrees and we're just left with the veneer as well. It seems, you know, that reminds me of the number plates on James Bond's DB5 Aston Martin. Although I shouldn't really be talking about Aston Martin while I'm in a Bentley, should I? Anyway, right, storage. As this is a car buyer review, let me talk to you about the door bins. Well, they easily fit a two litre large bottle of water, which is very nice. Under here, we've got a place to store your mobile phone with two USB charging ports. We've actually got a wireless charging pad as well. That's an optional extra. I'll come on to that a little bit more a little bit later on. Uh, under here, we've got two cup holders. We've also got a very large glove box as well. Now, quality-wise, it absolutely reeks of it. Everything you touch is absolutely exquisite. Do you know there are over 317 thousand stitches in here and 2.8 kilometers of thread. That shows you the level of detail Bentley has gone to give this the top of the line luxury feeling in here. Having said all of that though, there are a couple of things that annoy me. The first of which are these cup holders. Now inside, I know they're cup holders and they've got a job to do, but why they're covered in such cheap, shiny looking plastic, goodness only knows. Talking of plastics, I don't like the plastics up here. I know it's not something you're gonna to touch much, but that is really cheap and looks pretty shiny as well. And another thing, seeing as though the Bentley has gone to such great lengths with attention to detail in here, one example being the air vents that line up perfectly with this chrome trim. Why, when you switch the ignition off and the screen returns to its default setting, why don't these two veneers match up? That's something you would not find in a Rolls Royce, and it's a little bit disappointing to find that in the Bentley. And talking about things that don't match up, this little trim here doesn't match up at all. I know I'm being pernickety, but when, you, when you're spending 200,000 pounds, you expect that. Now, talking of prices, yes, I know the Bentley Continental GT starts at just under 160,000 pounds, but this car is 202, and that's because of the options list. The level of, of, of things that you can add to this car defies belief. I mean, the Mulliner driving specification, for instance, which is this quilting and various other bits, including these wonderful wheels on the outside, eight, pounds. Adaptive cruise control, it's all part of a package, £6,000. The fantastic Nime audio system, it's probably the best in the business. Bentley would charge you £6,500 for it, and then there's that display. you think it'd come free of charge, wouldn't you? But it doesn't. It costs £4,700. 
Befitting its luxury coupe status, Continental GTs are very well equipped. But in reality, no two GTs will be the same thanks to a massive options list. Various packs are available, but there are a wealth of wood, leather and tech options, all helping to push up the price of our car from £160,000 to a whopping £202,000. Now, the Continental GT is a supposedly a four-seater. Well, let's give that a go, shall we? Now, slide this seat forwards. It's electric, as you'd expect, and it's quite easy to climb into the back, actually. And let me slide this one forward so you can see what I'm talking about. Now, let me pull this seat back. Now, that seat is set up in my driving position. I'm just over five foot ten. Now, my feet are a little bit squashed, I have to say, but knee room is not too bad, and headroom is okay as well although if you are over six foot you are going to struggle back here but let's face it you're not going to be carrying six footers back here all the time these seats are for occasional use and for children because there are ice fix points back here as well and surprisingly the quality in here is lovely you get your own electric window controls as well um, we've got a couple of cup holders here as well same quality as the cup holders in the front so it's a little bit cheap um, a couple of usb charging ports as well so you can charge your things up and a 12 volt socket although one thing that's a bit of a surprise back here is unsurprised with this type of car uh, you're going to be wanting to carry your skis aren't you because these are the types of people that buy continental gts and there is a ski hatch but when you pull this down it's not hinged so you've got this strange piece of leather lined sort of panel which is which is lovely but it's not hinged so it sort of seems really quite pointless but really that is the only bad thing about sitting back here because for a four-seater coupe such as this there's a surprising amount of space back here just like the back seats, the boot, well, the amount of space you've got an offer in the boot is actually pretty good for a car of this type. Now, once the tailgate is lifted up and you can see that it's covered in really high quality carpet. I mean, this carpet is better than the carpet in my house, I think. And it's full of nice little touches as well. There's a couple of lash down points there as well. There's no underfloor storage though, because that is where the battery and all the gubbins lie. But look at this, this little 12 volt socket it's damped for heaven's sake unbelievable now i know that the boot does narrow towards uh, the further in you go but you can fit a set of golf clubs here at its widest point and if we do grab the car buyer suitcase the middle sized one you can see that you can easily fit two of those in there meaning the continental gt is a perfect getaway car at launch, there's only Bentley's flagship engine, the 6-litre twin-turbocharged W12. But in time, there'll be a smaller V8 and also a V6 plug-in hybrid version with clever wireless charging technology. Now, while the forthcoming V8 will be the driver's choice in the GT, you can't help but fall in love with the W12 because there's something so raffish, so caddish about having a W12 under the bonnet. And what an engine it is. It's a brand new six litre twin turbo W12 with, get this, 626 brake horsepower and 900 newton meters of torque. Slow it ain't. Now that torque isn't available right at the top of the rev range. It's available in full right down low right at around 1300 to be precise and that's where you want it to be because it, in this type of car it's all about accelerating quickly onto the autobahn or onto the autostrada isn't it and my goodness me does this thing accelerate now i know a car with 626 brake horsepower is always going to feel quick isn't it but in this i mean this leather lined two and a half ton car is absolutely extraordinary right we're doing 50 miles an hour and a quick squirt on the throttle and that's 100 miles an hour. It is extraordinary, it really is. And I suppose the sensation is made even more incredible because you're sitting in the automotive equivalent of Blenheim Palace. Everything is leather lined. You're sitting in this most wonderful seat. Uh, you've got this wonderful driving position and not that I've got it on at the moment because otherwise you won't be able to hear me, but you're sitting here listening to your fantastic stereo system as well. The sensation of speed in this is absolutely out of this world. The big W12 features cylinder deactivation, so under part throttle, six cylinders are shut down. 
but despite this, you'll still get a wallet busting 23 MPG. The V6 plug-in hybrid version should help matters considerably, but Bentleys never have been, and never should be, frugal cars to run. Not only is the engine new, it's also lighter and it's also considerably smaller than the old 6-litre W12. And that means Bentley's been able to shove it further back, more towards the driver in the engine bay. Now the benefit of moving the engine back means there's less weight over the front wheels and that really helps when you're cornering because the old car, if you turn into a corner pretty quickly, you'd feel the front end just wash out and that's because of the weight of the car. This, well, it's not a sports car, put it that way, but this is the sportiest Bentley Continental GT that's ever been made. One of the other reasons why the Continental is so much more thrilling to drive is due to what's underneath. The platform on which the GT sits is shared with the new Porsche Panamera, and while the two cars differ, you can feel that Porsche has had some hand in the development. The old GT, if you remember, was based on the VW Phaeton saloon. Now when you turn this new GT into a corner, you can feel it feels a lot lighter. Although the irony is that this car isn't that much lighter than its predecessor, but through some clever engineering, Bentley has managed to make it feel lighter and it feels a lot more agile on the road. The steering is lovely and beautifully weighted. It's nice and accurate as well. And the whole car just feels more willing to be thrown into a corner enthusiastically. As you'd expect, there are a number of different driving modes. If you go into sport, only 19% of the power is sent to the front wheels. Everything sharpens up the exhaust note, gets a bit more growly. And it means you can act a little bit more like a hooligan in the corners before the traction can Control, well, before the four-wheel drive system, I should say, neatly gathers things up. Now, the default mode is B, and it's a lovely default mode. You will tend to find yourself driving around in this mode all of the time because it's a nice blend between quite agile, you know, a nice sharp throttle, and yet there's still a nice compliancy to the suspension. There's a custom mode, which you can adapt to all the different parameters, and then there's comfort mode, and, oh, comfort mode it really is as the word describes because the suspension setup in this car four corners four corner air suspension is so soft and on the smoothest piece of road this thing just goes along like an ocean liner it is absolutely lovely although when you do hit a pothole you do thump into it even when the car is in comfort mode because this car's got 22 inch wheels and even Bentley's engineers can't change the laws of physics. If you've got such a large wheel hitting a pothole like that, you're always going to feel it. A few ride issues aside, and the fact that the GT wears a horrible plastic mesh grille, it's a gargantuan improvement over the old GT. While a Ferrari or an Aston Martin will outmaneuver it, the Continental GT wins in the luxury stakes and is easily one of the finest GT cars in the world. If you enjoyed this video, watch my Bendy Bentega review. And don't forget to give this video a thumbs up and press the car buy logo to subscribe to the channel. Thanks for watching.